The National Science and Media Museum, formerly the National Media Museum, the National Museum of Photography, Film and Television, located in Bradford, West Yorkshire, is part of the National Science Museum Group. The museum has seven floors of galleries with permanent exhibitions focusing on photography, television, animation, video gaming, the Internet and the scientific principles behind light and color. It also hosts temporary exhibitions and maintains a collection of 3.5 million pieces in its research facility. The venue has three cinemas, operated in partnership with Picturehouse Cinemas, including an IMAX screen. It hosts festivals dedicated to widescreen film, video games and science, and has previously hosted popular film festivals, including the Bradford International Film Festival until 2014. In September 2011 the museum was voted the best indoor attraction in Yorkshire by the public, and it is one of the most visited museums in the north of England. As of February 2016 the museum, in response to revenue shortfalls, has controversially adopted a policy of focusing on the science and culture of light and sound, to the exclusion of what are seen as unsustainable aspects of creativity and culture, such as past film festivals. In March 2016 a £7.5 million five-year investment plan in the museum was revealed by the Science Museum Group. In March 2017 its name was changed from National Media Museum to National Science and Media Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Building and admission Entrance is free, with the exception of cinema screens. The museum is open 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. every day. The museum underwent a £16 million refurbishment in 1998, developing a new digital technology gallery. This new development created a new glass-fronted atrium, which houses a new café and shop. Galleries There are seven permanent exhibitions Kodak Gallery – The Kodak Gallery takes the viewer on a journey through the history of popular photography, from the world's first photographs to the digital snapshots of today. Most of the items on display in the gallery are taken from the museum collection of 35,000 objects and images donated by Kodak. Wonderlab – explores light and sound through interactive exhibits and live experiments. Opened in 2016, replacing the Experience TV gallery. Life Online, the world's first gallery dedicated to exploring the social, technological and cultural impact of the Internet. BFI Mediatek, allows visitors to access the British Film Institute collection of film and television programmes in the BFI National Archive, it replaced TV Heaven, a unique viewing facility where visitors could access an archive of more than 1,000 programmes covering 60 years of British television history. TV Heaven closed in 2013 after 20 years, but 50 titles are still available. TV Gallery – explores the development, significance and cultural impact of television. Animation Gallery – explores the history of animation and animated images, with an emphasis on animation produced in Britain. Includes how animators bring drawings and objects to life. Games Lounge – playable classic games in their original arcade or console formats, the history of video gaming, the story behind this global phenomenon. Topic. 
Topic: Cinemas. The museum incorporates the first permanent UK installation of an IMAX cinema with a second screen opening in the UK 15 years later. Opened in 1983 as part of the Bradford Film Festival with the projector visible from a darkened booth of the fourth floor. Films included IMAX Prince of Apollo 13, The Lion King, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Batman Begins. In 1999, IMAX upgraded the system and began releasing IMAX 3D presentations. In 2015 it was changed to digital projection instead of film. As a result, the IMAX projection booth is no longer visible. The museum also incorporates the Pictureville Cinema, opened in 1992 and described by David Putnam as the best cinema in the world. Pictureville Cinema screens everything from 70mm to video, from Hollywood to Bollywood, from silence to digital sound, with certifications in presentation including THX in sound and picture and the Dolby X system. In 2008, the cinema presented the only true recorded public screening of Danny Boyle's 2002 film Alien Love Triangle. Pictureville Cinema is one of only three public cinemas in the world permanently equipped to display original three-strip 35mm Cinerama prints, and is the only public Cinerama venue in the UK. Cinerama films are screened at the annual widescreen weekend film festival, the Cubby Broccoli Cinema in memory of Cubby Broccoli, producer of James Bond films, contains 106 seats and is used for a variety of film shows. In 2012, it was one of three venues in the UK to screen the Olympic opening ceremony in super high vision. InSight InSight is a facility where members of the public can by prior booking view parts of the collections which are not on general display. Collection The museum's collection contains 3.5 million items of historical, cultural and social value. Notable objects and archives include The first photographic negative The earliest television footage The world's first color moving pictures Louis Le Prince's 1888 films Roundhay Garden Scene and Traffic Crossing Leeds Bridge A collection of 35,000 objects and images donated by Kodak Limited. A collection of around 1,000 historical objects from the BBC the photographic archive of the Daily Herald, comprising millions of images the photographic archive of Tony Ray Jones Original toys from the BBC series Play School, the first programme on BBC Two Objects and designs used in the making of Hammer Horror Films The collections are accessible to the public through the museum's Insight Study Centre the collection of the Royal Photographic Society was transferred to the museum on behalf of the nation in 2003. As of 2017, most of the collection is moving to the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. The National Science and Media Museum will retain collections that help explore the development of photographic processes, such as the Kodak collection, the cultural impact of photography, such as the Daily Herald archive, and archives that have a direct relevance to Bradford. Topic. 
Topic History Topic National Museum of Photography, Film and Television The museum occupies a site originally proposed for a theatre in central Bradford, for which work begun in the 1960s remained unfinished. Resulting from discussions between Dame Margaret Weston of the Science Museum, London and Bradford City Councillors, the National Museum of Photography, Film and Television, as it was then called, opened on 16 June 1983. The museum launched Britain's largest cinema screen, IMAX, five storeys high with six-channel sound, on the same day. During this period the museum specialised in the art and science of images and image making since Colin Ford, its first director, believed that understanding how images are made led to appreciation of the ideas expressed and the intentions and skills of image makers. To mark the 50th anniversary of the first public television service, two interactive television galleries were developed in 1986. These allowed visitors to operate cameras on a studio set with programmed sound and lighting, use vision mixers, read a news item from an autocue and discover how chroma keying works. In 1989, to celebrate the 150th anniversary of photography, the museum launched the Kodak Gallery, a display of the history of photography from its invention. This was followed by the installation of a standard television studio, first used by TVM for outside broadcasts and, later, Nickelodeon. These studios were the first live broadcasting studios in a museum. While continuing to run the Pictureville Cinema and exhibitions in a temporary venue on the other side of the city, the museum closed its main site on 31 August 1997 to allow for a 19-month, £16 million redevelopment, making the museum 25% bigger. The IMAX cinema was also developed to show 3D films. The new museum was opened on 16 June 1999 by Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> <laughs> National Media Museum On 1 December 2006, the museum was renamed the National Media Museum and two new £3 million interactive galleries were opened, Experience TV now replaced by Wonderlab and TV Heaven now the BFI Mediatek, dedicated to the past, present and future of television. The galleries displayed scientific exhibits, such as John Logie Baird's original apparatus, and television ephemera such as Wallace and Gromit and play school toys. TV Heaven made accessible the museum's collection of television programs, most of which are not available elsewhere. In 2009 the museum partnered with other bodies from the Bradford District in a successful bid to become the world's first UNESCO United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization City of Film. A major revamp of the foyer was unveiled in February 2010, including a brand new games lounge, a new gallery drawing on the National Video Game Archive established in 2008 in partnership with Nottingham Trent University. It was originally intended to be temporary but one in five visitors to the Games Lounge named it as their favourite part of the museum, resulting in the creation of a permanent lounge in another part of the museum. In March 2012, the museum opened Life Online, the world's first gallery dedicated to exploring the social, technological, and cultural impact of the Internet. 
The permanent gallery was initially accompanied by a temporary exhibition, Open Source, Is the Internet You Know Under Threat? An exploration of the open source nature of the Internet and the current threats to net neutrality and the continuation of the open source culture. In October 2014 the museum entered into a partnership with Picturehouse Cinemas with the national chain taking over the running of the three cinema screens in a bid to boost audience figures and revenue. The partnership is designated, "...Picturehouse at the National Media Museum." Despite sustained growth in ticket sales, the museum cancelled its participation in the 2015 Bradford International Film Festival and followed up by totally withdrawing from the festival the following year. This move, together with the transfer of a major photographic collection to London's Victoria and Albert Museum, is very controversial. In August 2016, the museum confirmed plans to permanently close their Experience TV gallery on the 30th of August 2016. The TV collection objects previously on display in Experience TV are now available to view by booking through the Insight Center at the museum. <laughs> National Science and Media Museum In March 2017, the museum opened its £1.8 million interactive gallery Wonderlab, which replaces Experience TV, and announced its change of name to the National Science and Media Museum. Wonderlab is based on the principles of light and sound. Attractions include a mirror maze, a 15 meter echo tube, and a musical laser tunnel, as well as the world's first permanent 3D printed zoetrope. In August 2017, it was announced that Soyuz TMA 19M, the space capsule that brought British astronaut Tim Peake back to Earth after his months long stint on the International. National Space Station, would be displayed at the museum in September 2017. This was the first time the capsule had been displayed outside London. In April 2018, the museum reported 505,000 visits in the 2017 18 financial year, a 25% increase on the previous year and the highest number since 2009. Topic: Past exhibitions. Topic: Current festival program. Topic: Widescreen weekend. This event began as part of Bradford International Film Festival and has been expanded into a four-day standalone film festival. It takes place every October and focuses on large screen formats and cinema technologies. It includes 70 mm and Cinerama screenings. Yorkshire Games Festival This video game festival began in 2016. It celebrates games culture, design and production, and includes a conference program as well as a weekend of events for families. It takes place every November. Guests at the first Yorkshire Games Festival included John Romero, Rihanna Pratchett, Charles Cecil, Warren Spector via live video link, Brenda Romero, and presenters of the Yogg's cast. <laughs> Bradford Science Festival 
This family science festival was first held in 2012, but was cancelled in 2016 after the previous organizers no longer had the capacity to carry it on. The museum took over the festival in 2017, in partnership with organizations including the University of Bradford, Bradford Council and Bradford College. Topic: Discontinued film festivals. The museum organized and held four major film events every year: Bradford International Film Festival, Bradford Animation Festival, Bite the Mango, and Fantastic Films Weekend. These attracted international speakers and new and classic works from around the world. All four festivals were eventually cancelled by the museum. Bradford International Film Festival From its inception in 1995, Bradford International Film Festival presented new and classic films from around the world. The festival presented films in their original formats wherever possible, and existed to develop understanding of the art and science of the moving image by hosting innovators in many fields of filmmaking. BIF included the Shine Awards, which highlighting the work of new European directors, a filmmaker's weekend designed to offer guidance and support to filmmakers in the north of England, and the Widescreen Weekend, which discussed film formats including Cinerama, Vistavision, 70mm and IMAX. Guests at Bradford International Film Festival included Riz Ahmed, Jenny Agutter, Michael Apted, David Arnold, Thomas Arslan, Ken Anakin, Olivier Assayas, Richard Attenborough, Simon Beaufoy, Alan Bennett, James Benning, Claire Bloom, Kenneth Branagh, Adam Buxton, Jack Cardiff, Ian Carmichael, Gurinder Chadha, Tom Curtinay, Mark Cousins, Alex Cox, Brian Cox, Benedict Cumberbatch, Terence Davies, Michael Dealey, Dennis Dercourt, The Dodge Brothers, James Ellis, Mike Figgis, Freddie Francis, Terry Gilliam, Stephen Graham, Richard Griffiths, Ronald Harwood, Mike Hodges, Joanna Hogg, John Hurt, Derek Jacobi, Galtiero Giacopetti, Terry Jones, Patrick Keeler, Mark Kermode, Mike Lee, Ewan Lloyd, Ken Loach, Malcolm McDowell, Virginia McKenna, Fernando Mireles, Kay Meller, Metamono, Chris Morris, Barry Norman, Michael Palin, Pavel Pavlikovsky, Christian Petzold, Sally Potter, Godfrey Reggio, Manelik Shabazz, John Shuttleworth, Jean Simmons, Timothy Spall, Amelda Staunton, Eric Sykes, Julian Temple, Alex Thompson, Richard Todd, Danny Trejo, Roy Ward Baker, Peter Whitehead, Michael G. Wilson, Barbara Windsor, Ray Winstone, Stephen Woolley, Thierry Ciano and many independent filmmakers from around the world. Other special programs included Bradford After Dark, New Horror Films, Alexei Balabanov, Stan Brockhage, Richard Burton, New Canadian Cinema, Pierre Clementi, Alexander Dovzhenko, Hauntology, A Centenary of Indian Cinema, Chuck Jones, James Mason, Yoshitaro Namura, Nicholas Rogue, Sixpack Film, American Teen Movies, Uncharted States of America. Discovered American Cinema, Amos Vogel, and the science films of Charles Urban. Topic: <inaudible> Bradford Animation Festival. The Animation and Video Games Festival was the UK's leading event of its kind, host to discussions, workshops, and special events. The annual BAF Awards honored new animation from around the world. 
Past guests include representatives from studios such as Pixar, Aardman, Weta Workshops and Sony Interactive plus animators Ray Harryhausen, Richard Williams, Bob Godfrey, Caroline Leaf, Michael Dudok DeWitt and Bill Plimpton. After the museum ended the festival following its 20th edition in 2014, former museum staff successfully revived the event in Manchester in November 2015 as Manchester Animation Festival. <laughs> Fantastic Films Weekend This festival began in 2002 as a weekend event focusing on classic ghost stories and the supernatural. It developed into an annual celebration of horror, fantasy and sci-fi cinema and television. In February 2013 it was announced that the Fantastic Films Weekend would not continue. <laughs> 